Dajia hao, this is Mark, and the video you're about to watch was originally posted on a different channel a few weeks ago. If you missed my explanation about what happened with Wushuzilla, be sure and click right there. To get everyone caught up, I'll be reposting about 9 videos from the Wushu52 project, and the video you're about to watch was recorded on January 7th, 2022, where I talk about my Wushu training history. So if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Are you ready? I'm ready. Roll the clip. Hello everyone and welcome back to Wushu52. In this video, I'm going to give you some of the backstory on my almost 30 years of training and being around Wushu, where I've trained, my coaches, all that good stuff. Are you ready? Let's go. So this video is going to be more of a rundown on where I've trained and my coaches. If you'd like to learn more about why I started Wushu in the first place and my motivation for training, then let me know in the comments below and I'll put that in a future video. So my first teacher, on March 12th, 1995, it was a Sunday, 9.30 a.m., was Hao Jirhua, Patty Lee at Wushu West in Berkeley, California. She now has her school in Oakland, California, but I really attribute Hao Jirhua with most of my fundamental foundational Wushu skill. She's really the teacher that built me from zero into anything that I might have become. If you're not familiar with Hao Jirhua, she was a member of the Beijing Wushu team alongside Jet Li, and she was the three-time national all-around champion of China. And over the 11 years I lived in California, I was able to train with quite a few different coaches in a lot of different schools, and I feel really fortunate. I trained with uh, Li Jing, I trained with uh, Chris Ho from Squa in Westminster, with Woody Wong and He Jinda. He Jinda is who I attribute most of my Nanchuan skill to, or Nanchuan flavor to, because he was really instrumental in helping me understand more of the nuance of Nanchuan. And during that time, I also visited Beijing and Shishahai, uh, the Tiyu Shuixiao, the sports school where the Beijing Wushu team trains. I was fortunate to go there and make some good friends with some of the athletes, which really helped me later on when I moved to China. In 2005, I moved to Shanghai. I didn't really know anyone there, but it just so happened that the Beijing Wushu team was coming down to Shanghai to train to prepare for a competition in Anhui province. And so my friend Wu Di, who was on the Beijing Wushu team, introduced me to the coaches and athletes where they were training down in the south of the city. And then I was able to get in and train with Yang Rongkuan, who's the coach there, trained with Yang Yonghong and Wang Pencheng and Xie Fu Yan. Xie Fu Yan and Wang Pencheng really helped me a lot with my Nandao Nanggun and some of my southern training. It was really great to be training next to these professional Nanquan focused athletes in China. And there are a few other places around Shanghai I was able to train as well. I also got to go up to Shandong to train with the Shandong Wushu team while I was living there. Thanks to Wang Wei from the Shandong Wushu team and my friend Jennifer who introduced me to him. And they're now married and they have a school in Monrovia, California called Wushu Unlimited. Be sure and check that out. In 2007, I moved to Hong Kong for two years. There wasn't a lot of contemporary Wushu instruction available at the time. The Hong Kong Wushu team was sort of sequestered away in Maanshan. It was really hard to get in to train with them. And so I started training some traditional Hongjia Chuan or Hungar with Ma Sifu. And Ma Sifu was really amazing. He's a direct lineage from Wang Fei Hong. And it wasn't until then that I really started to appreciate the traditional aspects of Chinese martial arts. I had always sort of poo-pooed them before that, really focusing on the contemporary stuff. Through that training, even though it was not very long, I really grew to appreciate and understand a little bit more about how the traditional training really feeds into the contemporary training and enhances your ability to do modern wushu much more effectively. After I got married in 2009, I moved to Xi'an, China, where I lived for four years. And while I was there, Wu Di again helped me. He introduced me to Wu Yanan, who is an uh, international, the world game Taiji champion and also national Taiji champion from the Shanxi Wushu team. And he brought me over to their training facility where I was able to train with them. And while I was there, I was training with a couple Nanchuan people like uh, Ye Xiaoyu, who you might have seen videos of online. And they really helped me a lot in kind of developing some of my work ethic with Wushu. Now, I still have a terrible work ethic with Wushu, but uh, just being there every day, dead of winter, heat of the summer, didn't matter. They were training hard. And not that I didn't see it with other professional athletes, but I think I was there on more of a daily basis with them than I was when I was in Shanghai. In Shanghai, I was working. I was very busy, had a lot of things going on. On. But in Shanxi, I spent a little more time at the training facility with those kids. And so yeah, I think it had more of an impact on me in that way. And while I was in China, I managed to go to a lot of different Wushu competitions over those eight years I was living there. I probably attended about 10 or 12 different competitions while I was there. And I videotaped a lot of them, which you could probably see if you go to the Wushuzilla YouTube channel. I think most of them are up there, uh, probably like 13 or 1400 videos at this point. I was also able to train at the Shaolin Temple, both the one in Henan and the one in Hebei, which is where I met a teacher for Xin Yi Lu Hechuan, the six wheel, six harmony wheel and mind boxing. I 
always get the translation wrong. Uh, the teacher there was freaking amazing. Uh, he was a direct lineage. His father taught him, who was taught from his father, etc., etc. Uh, these are people who really knew that specific style of martial arts. And it was really inspiring to be able to train with him. Just one-on-one, -on -one, me and him, training for a week or two, really intensely. And it was very profound. Over the years, since the late 90s, I also have been coaching in different parts of the world. And when I moved to Hawaii in 2013, I was asked to teach Wushu for the Molokai High School After School program. And I was also asked to teach Tai Chi for some kupuna or seniors on the island. And the Tai Chi class is still going strong to this day. Pretty cool. When I moved to Oahu at the beginning of 2017 and of 2016, I also started training with Zhang Lao Xia at the Hawaii Wushu Center. She had to leave for a period of time, so she asked me to help coach the external classes. And so I was coaching there for about five or six months. But it was right around that time when my health challenges started to happen. And I was bedridden for a while. I couldn't train for at least a year or so. And so this Wushu 52 is really kind of a way to, for me to get back into it and to reclaim some of that Wushu Wushu training skill that I've since lost. And over the years, I've also posted up a lot of Wushu blogs, Nairam.net, Wushu Adventures, Wushuzilla, a lot of different places, a lot of different posts and blogs and videos. And you may have seen me from some of those things, or you may have zero idea who I am, which is probably more likely. But there you have it. That's the summary of pretty much the last 30 ish years of me doing Wushu. There's a lot of other experiences I didn't mention here. This is just a quick summary. There's a lot of stories about training in China and things I learned from there that I have posted on some of the Wushu Adventures blogs, but there's a lot of stuff I haven't posted. So at some point I wanna share all of that information, but it'll take me a while to get all that down. And you know, even though I've had some really cool experiences, what's really made the difference for me are the friends that I've made, the relationships that I've developed. There's really something about sweating and bleeding on a wushu carpet with other people, that trial by fire that you experience together that really cements and creates and forges bonds and friendships and relationships. I mean, if you're watching this video, you probably already know that. So I'm just preaching to the choir here. I really value and appreciate the friendships and relationships I've developed through wushu. It's completely changed my life. The people I've met through Wushu have been instrumental in helping me become a better person. And so I really thank all of them and all of you guys for that. And that's that's really kind of one of the reasons I don't want to waste all of that experience I've had with Wushu. I want to give something back, uh, whether it's through coaching or through making videos or whatever it is. But I realized I can't give back if I don't even have the ability to physically perform any Wushu myself. That's sort of why I'm doing Wushu 52. I want to be able to reclaim some of that former Wushu skill so that if I coach or whatever I'm doing, I'm able to participate more fully. There's nothing worse than watching other people do Wushu around you and not being able to do anything yourself. It's very frustrating. So if you'd like to watch me work to rekindle that flame, then be sure and subscribe to the channel down below, blah, blah, blah. And uh, leave a comment uh, if you like, and I'll reply to that as well. And that's it for, you know what? I totally forgot. Uh, some of you might remember me from uh, Jet Li. I used to work for Jet Li for 10 years or so, both in the US and in China. And that was pretty significant. Although it wasn't directly related to Wushu, there was a lot of just kind of general Wushu around him all the time anyway. So um, that was a really interesting experience. If you'd like to learn more about what it was like working for Jet, you can uh, post that in the comments below and I'll maybe make a future video about that. Share whatever I can that isn't prohibited by my NDA. I'm kidding, there's no NDA. In any case, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Jaya.